everyone. In this video, we will explain how to use LVGL to build an intelligent display interface. We have different smart hardware. Here are some typical hardware for you to see. You can see that these three smaller screens are all SPI screens. SPI screen is a screen that uses SPI communication protocol for data transmission. This kind of screen has a feature that its resolution is relatively low. The screen size is relatively small. Therefore, the unified protocol of SPI can display the picture normally. Because small screens don't require too much data. In addition, some of the content we need to display on a large screen requires an SPI plus RGB screen. This type of screen has a higher resolution. This knob can reach a resolution of 480 asterisk 480. But this knob is only 2.1 inches, although this SPI screen is relatively large. But its resolution is relatively low. This small 1.9 inch one has a resolution of 320, 170. And this knob screen is also a SPI screen. Its screen is relatively small, only 1.5 inches. It is also possible to use SPI screens. This square screen is a 480 asterisk 800 resolution SPI plus RGB screen, although its hardware is different. Maybe the screen is different. Its MCU may also be different. Including some other peripheral hardware is different. However, a common abstract hardware layer is used to isolate the differences in this part of the hardware. Then use similar application layer programs to build intelligent interfaces. We can achieve the purpose of smart screen design more easily. Let us show you a larger one. 7 inch 480 asterisk 800 SPI plus RGB screen. You can see that it is showing an example of ALVGL stress test. This screen is actually driven by an MCU. Then show an example of an intelligent interface required for a specific application environment. This MCU core can be ESP32. It can also be STM32. Or some Linux system hardware. Now let's talk about how to build this intelligent interface using LVGL as an example. Arduino as a development environment about designing LVGL interfaces. If we can use LVGL code to directly design some of the simplest interfaces, there are several benefits to using LVGL code. One is that the content of our various programs is relatively controllable, especially for programmers, if they use code directly. The entire interface from the bottom layer to all the small controls is written by myself. All parts are familiar and easy to modify. But if you design a more complex interface, you will find that you are still a little bit powerless. When you want to design a more beautiful interface, UI design tools need to be introduced to designing complex interfaces. Let us briefly introduce using an open source UI design tool called Easy Studio. This UI design tool supports LVGL9 and LVGL8 versions. We can use this directly to design more complex LVGL interfaces. Here, I will mainly explain the entire tool to you, including code, how to add LVGL design code to Arduino project. Let me explain to you the main content of the overall use. Here, I will mainly explain to you how to use this Easy Studio to create a simple UI interface. If it's too complicated, you may have to spend a lot of time learning how to do programming and UI design. 
You can see that we designed a circular interface. A few points you need to pay attention to. One is its settings. It's on top. This is the settings for your project, which is the gear shaped button. You can see that there is the most basic content of our entire screen. Because our screen hardware is different, the resolution is different. Here we need to set the resolution when designing. Because the entire UI interface cannot use the resolution through adaptation, a fixed resolution must be set. Our round to point 1 inch screen has a resolution of 480 for 180. Then the screen is round. This button will turn on. The theme can be dark. If it is turned off, it will become a white theme. Then flow support can be turned on or off. It depends on the functionality of your UI. When flow is turned on, you can design some simple processes in the UI interface. That is, an event-driven process. If you turn it off, event-driven may require you to write code by hand. In addition, you need to pay attention to the location of LVGL included in the building. The default may not match the directory where you installed LVGL, so you may need to modify it. Some other parameters. If you need to modify it, you can also refer to it. These two parts are general and building, which are some basic parameters. You need to make some modifications according to your hardware. Then the rest is the names of the files of some automatically generated code. You don't need to make too many changes here. First, you can open a few windows here. We can set different windows by adding. We can switch to use when the UI is running. Then the small control below is the control used in our UART. In addition, the images used can be added via bitmap. After adding, you can use it directly. It should be noted here that this name should be lowercase as much as possible. If there is a capital letter in the middle, the name will be automatically separated by an underscore. This may result in a lot of errors in your code that need to be fixed manually. Another thing to note is that our GB565 is generally used in our embedded systems. That is to say, our GB has a color depth of 16 bits. The computer screens we usually use are generally 24-bit. Most common images are 2 for bit. Therefore, when a 24-bit image is loaded into a 16-bit color depth project, there may be some spots or border problems. To solve this problem, you can convert the image to 16-bit color depth first. Then check if there is any problem with the picture. If there is no problem, then use it. Otherwise, if you use 24-bit images directly, there may be some color differences or patches in them, which will be ugly. For the entire project, you can add the space you want in this widget. Then change the corresponding attributes in the properties. Of course, this attribute is more. Which properties need to be customized? You can try them one by one, or check some documents and try to change it. After the whole design is completed, we can directly check whether there are any errors. If there are no errors, just click Generate. After generations, a lot of code will be generated in our project directory. The code is some of the files in the settings we just saw. Of course, there will be some image files in it. We found the directory of our project. After opening this directory, you will find that there is UI and SRC in the project we built. This area is automatically generated with some code. We need to copy all of these codes to our Arduino project.
Let's open an Arduino project for you to see. You can see our Arduino projects. The w e c o d e s designed by Easy Studio have been copied. After copying, we can add this U onto our files. This mainly involves zui.h. The current Easy Studio no longer needs the following included code. We can directly use UiH to introduce the UI we designed. In the previous video, we talked about how to drive our screen. Here we go directly into setup to see how to load the UI. In fact, the entire UI loading is very simple. After you have completed the hardware driver part, which is an abstract hardware layer, its software, that is, the application part, is relatively easy. As you can see, we can initialize our code directly using an IV underscore in it. Here is LV underscore in it, which initializes LVGL. That is to say, LVGL is working. Then all that remains is the initialization of LVGL. This part is actually related to the hardware layer. When this part of LVGL has been initialized, we can introduce the interface we designed. This only requires one UI underscore in it. That is, there will be a UI underscore in it in our UI. H. You can see UI underscore in it. Another UI underscore teak needs to perform a teak in our loop function. That is a timing function. There is some overlap between UI underscore teak and this LV timer. There is no problem putting these two together. Many tests have been conducted. Here you can directly use the interface we design. If you need to manipulate some controls in the interface, these controls can actually be referenced through screens. We need to control these controls or update data. These controls will automatically appear in this structure. This name is the name we used when we designed it. You can take a look. None of our controls have names. No name. When we need to introduce it, we just need to give it a name. For example, it is called Imeg1. Save it. At this time, there is a name. Next time you generate code, there will be a name in this structure. The name we just designed will appear here. It represents the widgets we just used. We can directly reference the widget through this structure. Let's take a look at a widget that has used a structure. In this example, we introduce this widget. In screen, we find setup. The reference to the control appears in the loop. Take a look inside the loop. This is objects. These are the names of some of the custom widgets that appear on the screen. You can see there are four widgets in total under this control name that we use. We directly use the names of objects plus widgets. You can update the contents of widgets. Of course, if you want to design a very complex interface, very beautiful and professional interface, it still requires a lot of effort from everyone. This video mainly shows you how to add program code to the Arduino project from interface design. Then we can design a more beautiful smart interface through this process. Thank you for watching.